land of mystery where dreams become reality always listening to stories from the past the present and the future this is back to your story Hello, hello, hello. Hola. Hola, how are you? <laughs> so how's it going? It's good. Are you ready? I think so. I don't know. Maybe just a little bit. Yeah. No, um, <clears throat> I'm really excited to have you on. I uh, I remember reaching out to you or Alyssa reached out to you and like her and I were talking and um, I wasn't sure if you were even going to say yes. And you've just been really cool to come on and, and I do appreciate it. Yeah, of course I was going to say yes. Um, Well, you know, I mean, this whole process for me, like even like today launching and all this shit, it's like I haven't expected, you know, this many people to be so awesome and uh, just kind of come on a podcast and talk shit. You know, that's kind of what it's all about. But it's called Back to Your Story. Yeah, it is. And I think I think that's really cool. Like when you told me the premise of what it was, I was like, that's a super dope opportunity to have a conversation with somebody that's about getting back to exactly who you are, regardless of what you do or like where you're standing and whatever. 100% because at the end of the day, I don't know, I come from the thought philosophy that we all have a story. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been or what you're doing um, in in your life. We, We all have a story to share and everyone can take little bits and pieces from that that are listening to that story. And my whole life, I've always kind of just wanted to hear people's stories. I don't know. I think that humanity as a whole, um, you know, comes together better when we have open conversation and open dialogue. Um, you know, you know, for the people listening for the very first time, I'd like to, I, I don't normally do this. Well, I guess I normally do. I, I'd like for you to introduce yourself, kind of say who you are, what your name is and uh, your sign. My not, sign. No, not really. I'm just bullshitting. <laughs> Hi, Andrea Londo, Scorpio. There we go. I freaking love it. Um, so, also, wait, sorry. I said Andrea. It's usually Andrea. Andrea. But I have this weird thing when I say my name, like my full yeah. name. Yeah. I I always do that. I always say Andrea, and I'm not entirely sure why. <laughs> because That's when people, yeah, it's very strange. We're like, how what's how's it pronounced? And I'm like Andrea, and they're like, okay. And if I'm in at an audition, they'll be, yeah. can you slate? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> So it's Andrea, right? Yeah. Okay, Slate, Andrea Londo. And they're like... That's so weird. And it's just like this weird thing I do. Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Because when you said that, I'm like, wait a minute, is her name Andrea or Andrea? I'm (laughs) like, I don't even know what to call her. It's Andrea. I I, I was like, "Uh, she, can you answer the question, please? I I didn't know. I didn't (laughs) know. So it's it's Andrea. Mm -hmm. So I've said it correctly the entire time. Yes, you are correct. I I feel comfortable in myself (laughs) to proceed to the next question. Great. So Andrea, um... Where are you from? I mean, I know that we're here in Los Angeles, California, but where does the story of Andrea start? So it starts in San Diego, California, because oh. that's where I was born. Okay. But it technically doesn't really start there. I grew up in Tijuana, which Tijuana. is across the border from San Diego. A lot of people know it as Tijuana yeah. or... Tijuana. Tijuana, yeah. yeah. Every time I do that, when I'm just like, Tijuana, people are like, where? And I'm like, Tijuana, <laughs> TJ, across the border. Oh, yeah. Like, I know what that is. Exactly. So I grew up there and that's really home. I, I, like people, when they ask me where you're from, I, I, I tend to say, oh, TJ, San Diego, but it's really TJ. I just grew up going to school in San Diego, but okay. Tijuana is home. That's where my family is. Absolutely. And that's where it's, I that's, was that's made. Home. That's, yeah. where, that's where you were made. That's where you <laughs> exactly. conceived the whole, the whole nine. So <laughs> yeah. San Diego, Tijuana, Tijuana, TJ, um, all, all, all of the above. Yes. Uh, how was how that growing up as a kid? I mean, because you went to both sides. I mean, you'd go from San Diego to TJ, TJ to San Diego. What, what, what was that like? Yeah. So I started doing that at a very, very young age. Yeah. I think I did school in Mexico for about a year and it was like something ridiculous, like preschool, yeah. you know, nothing really substantial. And then I started going to school in San Diego from the time of preschool. And really the whole thought process behind it, as far as my parents are concerned, was learning to speak English. Yeah. That was the priority. Like 
make them bilingual in a way where if you learn English in Mexico, it's not the same. Okay. So that was the entire thing yeah. about it. Um, well, and both my brother and my sister did it. So why? Like, I mean, gr- grow- growing up at, you know, Mexico, America, why was it so important for your parents to be, uh, to, to have you guys be bilingual? You know, that's a very interesting question. I think it was more important for my mom. Okay. Um, my, I mean, obviously my dad was supportive, of course, because, you know, I'm very grateful for my dad. He's the one that worked <laughs> hard for us to be able to, to uh, all of us to be bilingual and for me to yeah. be here and all of that. But I think my mom was the first, so my brother, my sister and my brother and me are the three oldest grandchildren on my dad's side. Okay. And I think my mom was the first to sort of have kids and be like, my kids are going to be American and my kids wow. are going to be bilingual. And I've actually never had that conversation with her about like why. I just know that it was very ingrained in her mind. Like that's a better opportunity for you in your life. And that's what you're going to do and who you're going to be. And, um, and I've, I think now in my life, I really, really, really value it. Um, uh, And I'm extremely thankful for it, you know? Absolutely. You know, just kind of sitting here talking to you that for me, that blows my mind because it's like, you know, where you're from. And so you should be 110%, you know, happy with that. And as a parent, um, I mean, I understand, you know, uh, I guess, no, no, I don't understand. You know, (laughs) I can say that I understand, but I don't really understand. Um, you know, me growing up in Los Angeles, California, I've never, my parents were like, you have to learn Spanish, right? That, that was, <laughs> right. that was never the thing. Um, and I commend your mother, but at the same time, it, it makes me sad, right? It does. It really makes me sad because, um, your mom wanted a better life for you. And at the end of the day, we should all have a better life. And so your parents now, do they still, they still live in, in Mexico? They do. And you, your, your parents lived in Mexico at that same time or did they live in San Diego? No, nobody in my family has ever lived in San Diego except me. And by, San, well, my sister did live in San Diego for a bit, but what I mean by lived in San Diego is lived in the U S in general. Okay. So I'm the first one that like really moved to the U S and really stayed yeah. <laughs> in the U S. Yeah. And, and they all, um, where, where's your kind of, where's your family spread out now? Um, Tijuana, okay. uh, Tepic, Nayarit, okay. which is where my mom is from. So my mom is actually from Culiacán. Okay. Uh, my dad is from Tijuana, so they met in Tijuana. But my mom is from Culiacán, so I have um, a lot of roots there, which is Sinaloa. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the only reason that I know Sinaloa is from the, the cartel. Right. Um, and uh, <laughs> what, what, what was, I mean... Uh, it was know. destined that I was going to be on yeah. some narcotic show. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Def- def- yeah. def- definitely correct. <laughs> um, so what was that like growing up for you? Because you had both sides. You know, you had the the American side that you um, are obviously living in now. And then mm-hmm. you had the uh, the Mexican side. Was that hard for you as a young kid to kind of... Uh, look at like well, who I am as an individual? Yes, it was very hard. And it was hard because how it's, it's very, you know, as a kid, you're very hyper aware of what you're missing out on. Yeah. I think Absolutely. that shapes you a lot growing up. You know what you see other people have and what you don't, sadly, right? But of that's course. how like we work as human beings. And I think I would see a lot of kids have a very Mexican life, which was, very social, a lot of friends. And I never really had that. And I think a lot of it had to do, I mean, I had my small group of friends from school, but I definitely saw a very big difference with like me and my cousins and the life that they led and like what going to school in Mexico would have been like. And I think there was a little bit of a sense of missing out and there's, but it's not just that, right? It's also the fact that in school I was, one of the Mexican girls, understandably so, you know, yeah. like you come from another country every day to go to school in the same <laughs> place crazy. as somebody that lives around the corner from the school. And 
um, you speak Spanish during recess and <laughs> you have other friends that speak Spanish during yes. recess and um, you go back home and it's just like, I'm going back to Mexico. Bye. See you guys tomorrow. And so you're a Mexican person in school. Yeah. And, but you're American. And I, I don't think I fully grasped that as a young kid. I didn't think there, I didn't feel necessarily in my power of like, I'm American too. Like I knew I was, but I didn't really feel it because yeah. it was so obvious that I was also very Mexican. Definitely. And then in Mexico, I wasn't the type of Mexican that other Mexicans were because I went to school in San Diego. So I was this, and not, I mean, there's other people like me. Of course. Um, that's why I, I call it like being a border child because there's this strange psychology of being both at the same time, but never fully, um, at times I felt growing up never fully valid as one. Wow. You know? That's a, yeah. It sounds way deeper right no, now. No, 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 <laughs> but it's but it's true because it I don't know, these types of things especially as we we're, we're children growing up it uh, shapes who we are. Yes. It shapes who we are as an individual and being uh, from both sides and not feeling fully accepted. In either. Uh, in either. <laughs> in either. That blows my freaking mind. And especially as a kid, because mm -hmm. we are so hyper aware of, of everything. And I, I was hypersensitive as shit as a kid. <laughs> yeah. um, um, and I, I can only imagine, you know, what you had to go through um, not feeling fully um, accepted on both sides. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did the kids treat you? Because I mean, like you said, you know, you come to a, you're you're in America, going to school, and you you know you're speaking Spanish at recess. You go back home, and you're kind of the American kid. Like, what the fuck is that like? Yeah, I, I mean, as far as how other people treated me, I think there was other kids doing the same thing. Okay, where I was going to school, so I didn't really feel like, oh, I'm getting bullied for being the Mexican girl. You know what I mean? Yeah. I there was none of that. Um, and I was also very, 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 very young. I did a lot of sports. Okay. Like I did tennis competitively. I did swimming competitively. I did gymnastics competitively. Like competitively. Competitively. <laughs> I said that wrong. <laughs> okay. But I did a lot of sports. So I think um, I'm not, I, I lately for some reason, I've been trying to really figure out what it was about me that really took me into um, being so obsessive about things and like fully launching into something. Yeah, I get it. Uh, because I did that ever since I was really young, especially with sports. That was the first time, like I did gymnastics four hours after school. So I'd get home from school and then my mom would have like food ready and I'd eat like, just like <laughs> eat really fast. And then I'd just go to gymnastics for about four hours. So I had this other life outside of school that was my priority. Okay. So I didn't really have this notion of like, am I being accepted socially? Because I, I had no space for that. I mean, I did gymnastics until I was 15. All right. So I, I, people would be like, hey, we're going to the movie theater after school. Do you want to come? And I'd be like, nah, You're gymnastic like practice. <laughs> <laughs> Not interested. Um, <laughs> so I didn't really... <laughs> <laughs> Respect. I get it. I get it. No, I don't know why I was like that. It wasn't, I wasn't trying to be like dedicated. Not. I just genuinely, I genuinely was like, what if it's the day that I do the double yes. flip? <laughs> like, you know. But just, it's true. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I was like. So I never felt, I think I just felt it. I think as a teenager, once I stopped being a gymnast, yeah. I'd get to parties saying like a party in TJ where, you know, everybody knows each other and there's this like, big groups of girlfriends and whatever. And I'd get there with like one girlfriend because that was the one girlfriend I'd kept since I was eight. Um, and then, you know, you're in that age where like, if a boy likes you or something, it's like, so who are your friends? And then that would always make me feel so uncomfortable because I didn't, living this like life, yeah. very kind of nomadic, not established sure. anywhere. And um, I did feel very insecure in that once I got to being a teenager and realizing like, oh, okay, wait, I don't have these foundations that everybody else has. I'm not that kid. I'm not that girl. Like that was difficult, but I, but I think it's, it, it absolutely has to do with being a border kid because I didn't grow up going to the same school and, 
you know, um, having all these like friends readily available to me that, you know, the entire classroom didn't live nearby. Does that yeah. make sense? No, it's, it it's, does. Yeah, it's it a trip. Does. It it's does. a trip. Yeah. I couldn't imagine that, you know, for, for me as a kid um, growing up, I knew I went to school. I came home. My parents were there. Um, and, and, and that was that. And then as I got older, I ca- all I cared about was going skateboarding and getting stoned. Like that, that was literally <laughs> it, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and that was my life. I never had to think about um, life at a just kind of a deeper level, especially mm-hmm. as a kid. We can't, um, at least for me, I couldn't conceptualize. I couldn't wrap my head around um, anything else, like anything else except my life. But as I'm a, an adult, you know, I, I look at... I look at the world as a whole, yeah. right? And there are so many kids out there that are going through what you went through. Mm-hmm. And 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 even worse, it's not to take what you've done, but like or your life, but and make it any less, but it's it's just the life that we live. Um for for you, how long did this last? Were you going back and forth till you know you graduated yeah. high school? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> wow. Preschool to high school. Holy shit. I mean, the way of getting there changed. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of carpooling, then there was exclusively driving with one friend who like got a license when she was sixteen. Yes. And then it was me driving myself half of junior year and then probably all of senior year to okay. school. I think if I remember correctly, because there was a there was a lot of me driving myself to school towards the end. Um, so the process of getting there shifted, yeah. but it lasted my entire life up until like, okay, either go to college or, you know, do whatever. Definitely. And, and have you talked to your siblings about this and what they felt? Did they go through some of the same things? I don't know. Actually, I've never had this conversation. I, my, I've had some type of conversation around this with my sister. Okay. Um, but it re- it revolves more around the fact that we went to an all girls high school. You did, <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay. So we talked more. We talked more about like the experience of that. Um, and with my brother, my brother was kind of like a wild child in the sense that he. I mean, he got expelled when he was in sixth grade. I hope he doesn't mind me yeah, <laughs> saying that. It sounds like me <laughs> three times. I got kicked out of every high school yeah, and junior high school. I was a bad kid, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if he was a bad kid, but I think he's a very smart human being. Yeah. But I think he's always been. Uh, what's the word like? I think I think he could see through the bullshit of like why am I in some class listening to this history thing like that doesn't like <laughs> interest me at all. I, I think it. he was very much just into what he was interested. So he started going to school in Mexico um, after sixth grade because my parents weren't like, okay, we're done with you. <laughs> like, yeah, we're not, yeah, we're like, not doing this that. with you exactly. So he's so he so he went to school in Mexico. So his experience is completely different, which is super interesting to me because. M- I, it's so, it's so funny. Cause you said, you know, like that experience must have shaped you, like the of way course. you went to school and all of that. And I think what shaped me even more so is that after that, I really moved to the U S and was like, okay, let me try this here. Yeah. Let me do something right in this part of the planet, which is so close to home, but so different. Yeah. And my brother is a perfect example of how like different, um, your life pans out if that's not your life. You know, okay. even if you live in a city that's right next to the U.S., it's completely different if you really live your life in Mexico versus if you decide to not do that. Yes. You know? It's so weird because we're so close. But so close. So close, but it's... <laughs> It's like as you drive, you know, through San Diego and then you get closer and closer to the border. I mean, you can start to tell the difference, right? Yeah. And then you get across the border and it's it's so different. Immediately. It, immediately. And it just mm-hmm. blows my fucking mind because I went to Rosarito Beach. Um, Alyssa and I went to Rosa Be- Ro- Rosarito Beach for 4th yeah. of July and uh, we drove down there. And it's, it's just so insane to me mm-hmm. because... We are so close, but we are so far apart. Yes. And, you know, I just kind of keep on thinking about your parents and the life that they grew up in and to really see that, okay, we got to do everything that we can to try to give them a better life. Mm -hmm. What did that mean to you? I mean, looking back now as, as an adult, what does that mean to you? 
Right now, it means everything to me. I am so grateful for the education that I received. And it's also depending on the person that you are, right? But I was always very into school. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed learning. It made me excited. It made me excited to learn a new skill, to listen to what somebody had to say. Like um, To this day, I think about going back to school because I miss it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that mental stimulation of and 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 hearing somebody else's opinion that's so well formed and so like i i love it but i i think you know my dad i think there's this thing when i when i talk about who i am and it's so funny i'm doing this podcast right now because i recently posted something on instagram talking about like i'm privileged that i come from a socioeconomic background where my parents could afford to send me to school in San Diego because you can't, I didn't go to public school because that's illegal. You need to go to pub, you need to go to a private school so that you pay tuition yeah. because public schools for people that pay taxes, which are not my parents because they live in Mexico. So, yeah. so I think my dad made a lot of sacrifices for us to have that education. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can fully grasp that until you're older and you nope. realize the amount of money it took and like being a studious kid, I always had scholarships and I always, you know what I mean? But I mean, that's whatever. I mean, that, that entire burden of like, especially, you know, my sister's entire tuition, mine, my brother's, you know, because I mean, he also, they also paid for tuition in Mexico. And, and I think that sacrifice has really made me aware of how important an education is because I think sometimes we're just like, eh, there's this mentality nowadays that really irks me, which is like, <laughs> which is just this thing about school, like, oh, you just get in debt and you just, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I, and I, and I, I understand it. You're laughing at me. <laughs> is that what you say? Uh, uh, both sides. I see both sides. I'll explain why. After you yes. Go. Because go. it's ridiculous what it costs. Sure. Now. It it's is. ridiculous. It is. But see, but this is my um, devil's advocate aspect go. of that is that I think that you cannot come out. Okay. So people say, oh, what, what do you get at the end of it? A piece of paper? No, so much more than that. I mean, the reality is you are never in a setting in real life, very hardly anyway, mm -hmm. where you're in a setting where like other 20 people and everybody is from somewhere completely different than you. Yeah. And the topic is wine. The topic <laughs> is Buddha. Yeah. The topic is whatever you want it to be. And you could have people that think the same way, but then you listen to why they think that same way and it's completely different than yes. you. And I don't think you come out of four years of that, of that awareness uh, the same person. Not you come out a completely different person, way more open-minded, yep. way more aware of what it takes to one, like form a human being yes. and two, be respectful of what people think and why they're different Absolutely. because like where you're raised and all of these different things really impact how you think and what you do and, and how you go about like living your fucking life. It's so true. And it's, it's so, so powerful. True. I get so passionate about this because <laughs> I think it's so lost now. I think now we're so because you don't need an education all the time to be successful. I think it gets lost that like, it actually is something that is super important and it's it could be such a beautiful life-changing experience to be around such different mindsets. It's, it's, it's so true. You know, I see both sides of the argument. Um, for me, what it comes down to is the experience, what you're talking about, because you go through school, high school, right? And, and then, for people that just say fuck college and try to go out into the real world. Well, the real world hits, man. Like there's, oh, there's, man. there's no, <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Yeah. Right. But for the people that do go to school, you have this two to four year time in your life where you can still be in a melting pot of individuals, be on your own, go through this experience, but still fuck up and not have yeah. the major repercussions that you would have um, if you were in the real world, right? Yeah. And so you, you, it does shape the individual. Um, 110%, I agree with you. You um, and, and many other people that have been on this podcast are really starting to shape my understanding because I was from the thought philosophy, like, no, fuck that. I turned out fine. I didn't go to college. Yeah. Right? I, I personally dropped out of high school. I took my GED, but I struggled a lot and yeah. I did not uh, personally start to find myself until my later twenties. And so, you know, 
I did understand for the longest time it's like debt, 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 mm-hmm. debt. But you know, unless you know you're racking up one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollar debt, that's a different story, right? But yeah. for the people that rack up twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars for that for that experience for those four years. It's definitely worth it if you're open to it. Which, by the way, I just want to say something. It sounds like a lot of money, no. but you pay that for your car. Yeah. You literally sign your life away. If you get a new car, you're like, I'm going to pay this in three or four years, five years. But yeah, but that car cost you 36, 35, 37, 45, 50, yeah. depending on what you get. Yeah. Or <laughs> fuck, even more than that, if you're like being real bougie. But you know what I mean? Like, of course. it's really... It is expensive yeah. because it's it's an education, so it's it's a business now. Yeah. So it's expensive, but in reality, in you know, in relation to what other things cost in life, it's 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 also not this undoable thing. Not at all. And I just all I also want to say I didn't actually graduate. Respect. So I like I feel like I'm just shit. Wait, wait, <laughs> you didn't graduate high school or college? You graduated college. Okay, I was like I got an associates well, right. and that's all right transferred and then life happened. Well, that happens, right? That, that, that happens, yeah. you know, um, you know, for you kind of hearing your story and, 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 you know, where you're at in your life today. Um, I, I, but I do, I, I kind of want to just dial it back real yeah. quick to your parents, right? Mm-hmm. Um, everything that you've been afforded, right? The, the, the opportunities, although, um, it's had its ups and downs, like mm-hmm. everything in life, right? What about your parents? Where? How did your parents, growing up in Mexico, figure out a way that uh, their kids are more important than anything else and we want to give them the opportunity to have a different life than us? What was that? The culture, <laughs> being um, Mexican. I think there's a lot of uh, pride in your family su- like being successful. Yeah. And I think... My parents were just trying to be smart about um, they could have a career in the U.S. Yeah. I think that's what it was. And it's not, you know, I think sometimes um, there's this thing where, like, if you speak highly of opportunities in the U.S., you're putting down Mexico and the opportunities afforded there. And absolutely not. Yeah. I think there are opportunities there, but it's a very different system overall. Yeah. And I think in general, as far as, you know, minimum wage, just, just there, simply there, you could have a very decent life. If you had a minimum wage job that paid slightly above minimum wage, right? Like say even a dollar or 50 cents, whatever it might be. An hour. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you live within your means and then you start growing wherever it is that you're working. Like there is some future for you. There is hope. I think that hope doesn't exist in Mexico. I think okay. in Mexico, you know, if you work at a Starbucks, there's no like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to become manager here and every year I'm going to have this like raise or or at some point, you know, maybe I could go into corporate. I don't even know that happens at Starbucks, but I know it happened at like I worked at Zara and I know yeah. that that's a thing. It's a okay. it's a thing. You could yeah. start as a sales associate. Yeah. You could grow into whatever and whatever and whatever and then and eventually be a part of out. corporate and of course. it's like so like you could have a career even if you started working at this retail store. Of course. And I think that is not necessarily the case in a lot of the work opportunities in Mexico. So that's mostly, I think, the vision that my parents had. They were like, okay, well, they they have the potential to grow even at this level of just being a U.S. citizen affords you that opportunity, which I think is what is lost sometimes, yeah, the sure. value of it, why it's such a valuable thing to so many people. I think, I think that's why, you know, I, you know, a lot of times I hear like, cause, cause obviously your parents came here and your, your mother had you here, which then made you an American citizen, right? Yeah. I'm sure people that, that are listening to it, some people are like, well, fuck that. Like, that's not cool. Right? No, I find that amazing because if I had a kid, I would do anything in my power to give them a better life. And so for the individual that's saying, oh, that's not cool. They're from Mexico. No, fuck that. Yeah. Just think about yourself as a parent. 
would you do anything in the world to give them a better life? If the answer is yes, well, then you would do the same exact thing. The answer is no, well, you're a dumbass. I'm sorry. Well, my parents, the thing is, it's so interesting because I think anybody that hears any type of border situation, they're like, oh, people without documents. No, my parents have a visa. There we go. Like when they, when they visit me in in LA, they have to have a permit. Like you need a permit as a Mexican citizen to be like, hey, I'm going to visit my daughter in LA and I'm going to be, and you get a permit for a couple months and it's like, everything is very legal. So like there's. You know, if, if somebody is anybody that's listening to this that has an issue with the fact that I'm a U.S. citizen just because my parents fucking wanted me to be, Whatever. don't understand that, like, you can do that just yeah. as much as you could probably. I mean, I'm not going to go ahead and name a place, but I'm sure that there's somewhere in Europe, for example, that you could yeah. do that. Or yeah. you could go somewhere in Africa and, like, have your child there and just be like, well, all of a sudden my kid is, you know what I mean? So it's it's wherever you you choose to do things and my parents did it right. Like, I don't know anybody, anything. I, I'm, I'm rightfully a U.S. citizen and I don't give a fuck who it is. No, no, straight up, straight up, straight (laughs) up. You know, I was watching this, um, what is it? The day after tomorrow, a world never ends. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what the name of the movie is. Right. But it's, um, but, but there's this one scene where there's uh, the world is ending. Right. And there's climate change and, and all this shit. Right. And all of the Americans are trying to get into Mexico. Right. Well, it started <laughs> making me think, right? Well, well, climate change is a real fucking thing, oh, yeah. right? And as, you know, maybe not in our lifetime, but definitely in the lifetime down the future, if if this doesn't get solved, there's going to come a time where the, the Americans are going to try to get into Mexico and farther and farther and farther, right? right? Because of climate change and it's warmer and warmer. Um, so so that being said, it's like, I don't know, we just have to figure out a better way. And there, there are people that might listen to this and think the way that they want to think. And that just blows my mind, right? Because yeah. we're all humans. Literally, it, that's what we are. And if we can't come together as one, then I, I don't know what the heck's going to happen. Yeah. So for, for you, you went to high school. What was that point? Because I'm, I'm going to bring it back again. What was that point for you that, all right, all right I'm ready. I'm going to move to America. I'm like fully going to do it. Oh, man. I think, so I mentioned how I was like um, very studious, but I was very, I think I was very, kind of obnoxious in <laughs> in in what I thought I was capable of in a good way I guess good. because if you never think that you can achieve anything you probably won't um but I thought I was going to go to college right after high school okay that was my plan because that's what people do and that's what's the logical next step for sure and I applied to some schools that were like my dream schools and whatnot and all of a sudden it's like I have a 4.1 GPA, I'm in the top 10% of my class, and I don't get into any of the schools that I wanted to Wait, get what? into. Exactly. And it was, I I remember that was the first, like, you know when people say I was at rock bottom, that was the first rock bottom of my life, like oh. really, really being in a place where it's like, sorry, you're not special enough to go to our school, but we wish you luck. And and I was just kind of like, what the fuck? Like, this doesn't happen to me. Why is what this the- happening to me? Like, yeah, it, made, it made no sense. I was like, I did everything right. Like, and I was extremely devastated. I get it. And I had my plan had always been... I'm going to go to college. Okay. I'm going to do like theater in college. And okay. and while I get like a normal bachelor's, which is like plan B, you know, I'm safe. I'm going to go into acting after that with like my safety belt. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and it just didn't happen that way. And I remember at the time I had my first boyfriend who was going to go to my dream school. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. It's a burn. And, yeah. And, um... I was, I was, uh, that's another story, but I was, I was kind of really bitter that he, you know what I mean? I because I think in my mind, I was like, I'm smarter than him. And, <laughs> and like, it's not fair that he's very smart and very capable and deserves everything that's ever happened to him. But, um, I was in this place and I remember he was like, I told him, like, I want to, I remember I was crying and he, was the only person that I obviously, right, your boyfriend at the time, he's the only person that I kind of let around me. And 
um he was like well what do you want to do like and I was like well I want to be an actress and he was like well then do that and I remember I was just crying like who like you know what I mean like who does that like who really does that (laughs) and he was like I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna lie and we're gonna say we're gonna do something in San Diego and we're gonna drive up to LA and we're just gonna see LA like LA is not that scary and I think when I think back to that experience Um, I'm really grateful that I had at the time a boyfriend that was so like, um, you know what I mean? Like you're going to be okay. And yeah. and I think you're badass. And I think that like you're still worth so much regardless of like these fucking dude. schools. Yeah. yeah, he was a good, good dude. dude. He was a good cheerleader. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Very good cheerleader. Yeah. And we, we did that. And I think it just, it sort of made, it didn't make anything that I was going through less scary, but at least I'd been in LA. Yeah. And it was funny because we went to a, like we went to the Grove okay, and um, we went to Barnes and Noble because we were really nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. It's we, fine. It's fine. And I love we, it. And we went to the Starbucks and he was one of those people that could just talk to people. And he started talking to the guy that like was at the register. And um, before you know it, I had a job. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> exactly. So I, so when I, <laughs> so when I moved to LA, a couple months after that, um, I went to that Starbucks at the top of the Barnes and Noble at the Grove and I started working there. Like I had a job immediately. So I had like a means of some type of financial yeah. something. It was just right? kind of a foothold. I get it. Yeah. So the whole thing happened like that. I failed miserably at getting into college <laughs> and then um, I sort of was like, I guess I want to be an actress. And that story is longer because I did like, I was here for four months yeah. and then I was like getting fat because I was eating my feelings and I was crying and I was just like over it. And um, I moved back to Mexico for a little bit, broke up. And it was just like this weird time in my life where I was young and I was sort of like just unhappy. And then all of a sudden I was happy because, but then I think after a couple of months, I realized you're happy because this is familiar. Yes. And I think I, I think I remember having a day where I was just like, okay, you're happy. Yes. But this is the rest of your life. This happiness, this level of happiness, this is the rest of your life. Like if you decide this, that's cool. But I had always wanted to leave home and to try something and to like, I always, always had this feeling of like, you can do so much. And how old were you at this point? Like 18. Okay. Wow. <laughs> All right. Good for you. Good for, good for you. I definitely never thought about these things when I was 18. Or like but. 19. I get, okay. but see, I never belonged at yeah, home. Yeah. So I think I, I never, um, when you were asking this earlier about like, how does being a border child like yeah. affect how you viewed life? I think I never fully felt like, I belong here. And I think I, there's this like weird fantasy I think everybody has about college where it's like you can go somewhere new and nobody yep. knows you. Of course, absolutely. This is your new chance. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's real. It's like it's that point real. in your life. It is. It's it is. so real because yeah. I think you're somebody with your family because I've always thought this. I'm like, there's a, ver- like, I think my, f- even just, not just my family, I just think like hometown in in general, like, those people that known you since you were, you know, freaking Mm -hmm. nine or eight or whatever. And it's like, there's this, there's always this version of who you are that is just like, just fits with the narrative of who they think you are. And then there's who you really are. And you discover that a lot when you live by yourself. And I, you know, I started living by myself when I was 19, really living by myself. And I was like, I, 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 to this day, I think back at what everything I did and I'm like, why? were you so stupid? <laughs> like <laughs> like nothing, nothing went bad. Nothing went wrong, but I looked up a room on, I, I checked rooms on Craigslist. I went to some couple, like a couple sketchy Craigslist, like come check out my room. I'm renting out my sofa. <laughs> like I, I went to those Checking places. Out my sofa. Yeah. Like I remember, <laughs> it's funny. yeah, no, it was yeah, true. Yeah. I remember at one place I was like, that guy was weird. I'm leaving. <laughs> like, there's no way I'm going to stay yeah. on his couch. <laughs> And then I found this Filipino family that was renting out a room. They saw me and they were like, you look, how old are you? <laughs> because I've always looked young. Yes. And I think when you're 19, I probably, to them, I probably look like fucking 13 yeah, years old. I was going to probably say 12. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they were like, they were like, and I was like, 
I was, I mean, I didn't have, I didn't have money. So I was like, I, I have half the rent right now, but I have a job. I swear oh to you, God. I have a job. And I had got a job at Zara when I moved back. Wow. I, I just printed out a bunch of headshots and like, not headshots, resume, something like an actress already. <laughs> I printed you out, out yeah, for yeah, Zara? Yeah, 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 exactly. It's weird. <laughs> so weird. So weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're not superficial at all. No, no, no. I was printing out resumes and I... <laughs> I remember they called me and I, no, I remember everywhere I went, I was like, can I speak to the manager? Can I speak yeah. to the manager? Because I know, exactly. Because that's smart. what they want to see. So by the way, if you're looking for a retail job, just be like, can I speak to the manager? Yep. Um, it's so true. It's so, so true. true. So but true. I knew that. Yeah. So I, so I, so I did that. And um, Zara is at the, I worked again at the Grove. It's like, I can't escape the Grove. No. Um, and then I, I worked there, but I had a job like two days after moving to LA. Cause all I did was like hand out resumes. Cause I was like, I need to first have a job. <laughs> I need money. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> this is that point where were you with the boyfriend or you now you're broken no, up? No, no, okay, no. Okay. No. So we you guys up. are broken up. He, he brought you up here. Then all that shit happened, right? He so, was just wanting, he just wanted to encourage me. Like you can do this. It's course. not that scary. How did you go from like being super fucking pumped to go to college? Didn't get in from a 4.1, which I, I thought there was only a 4.0. So <laughs> whatever. Um, that being said, and then you're just like, fuck it. Um, I, did you even like decide to go to college? Cause I know you dropped out, but like yeah. what was going on between that? So like, so I told you that I moved to LA. The first time yeah. I did that, I lived at a like aunt's house who I never knew her until I lived with her. Okay. But she was like on my mom's side of like relatives or whatever. And I lived, when I worked at Barnes and Noble, I lived with her, okay. but only for four months. That's when I was like, I can't do this. And I moved back and it was nothing related to her. She's amazing. And I'm so grateful. Like anybody that is willing to open their doors 100%. and not charge you money and just like like just be like okay yeah live here you know it yeah. that is to me just like first of all such a like you know i think i think mexicans are kind of like that yeah. where they'll just like be like your family you know what i mean i love your mom like of course just like crash here for three or four months but it's hard to you know for for many reasons but when i finally I think I moved back because I was not in that place. Like you're asking me, how did you go from that to that? It's yeah. like, I try to go to that and I was crying and I was overeating and I was like, just, you know, and I was lying to my parents because I told them I was going to USC. Oh shit. Because I had the GPA to have gotten into yes. USC. So I was like, yeah, I got into USC. That's why I'm moving to LA because I remember jokingly telling my mom like, I want to be an actress. And my mom was kind of like, uh, your dad yeah, is right. never going to be okay with you, like moving somewhere to be an actress. And I was like, well, I got into USC, so. <laughs> oh my God. I know, but don't do that. Like no, it's so, no. it's so overwhelming to lie yeah. with something so big yeah. because it's also like people are proud of you for something that you're not and mm. you feel like a fraud and that in and of itself is really hard. You always get caught. You always, well, or I. You, like I never been caught just until ratted myself out right now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, 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 no. I actually, I actually, it's funny how my dad found out because there was like this, I just doing like, I was doing press and they did this article on me. <laughs> That's so fucking awesome. I Sounds know. like shit I would and do my back dad, in the day. My dad sent the article to me with question marks. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Sorry. What am I saying? Sorry and to I myself. I was just like, I was oh, just like, oh shit! I was just like, yeah, dad. So by the way, yeah. but I was in a place where I felt safe enough to yeah. be like open about my lie because I was working. Yeah. So I was like, hey, dad, but I'm working. I'm yeah. gonna be okay. It makes sense. But it's still really like I'm sure he was really sad about yeah. it. He was like, you know, I. I and I can understand it. You know, everything I've said leading up till now is like how important education was for my parents. And then all of a sudden I lied about going to college. Um, so I, I am, it's not, I'm not proud of that. I think it sounds badass in retrospect, but it's not. <laughs> no, you're, you're absolutely correct. But yeah. in, in retrospect, right. The happiness that your parents had, right. Yeah. I'm just, I'm looking at it from the other side of yeah, that, right. Because it, worked out, it worked out, it worked out for you, right. Like at that point, right. Um, but what if it hadn't? But if it, it usually doesn't, right. that's the thing, but. <laughs> your parents were very happy and although it didn't work out the way that you said it did it worked out for other things right. um that's uh, that's that's a few and far between because it usually doesn't happen that way I know. 
But okay, so now we're gonna dial it back once again. So yeah. you're kind of going through all of this. Yes. Um, you 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 then move back to Mexico for a little bit a of time, a couple months, a couple months, well, and, then, and then what did your parents think at this point? They're like, I'm going back to LA. You're like, I'm gonna go to USC again, or mm, yeah, they thought. They, you know, this is what's really funny. Like, I'm gonna go to Harvard. I almost yeah, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> meanwhile i'm just like i just uh, moved to boston I like know. rent a room or some shit <laughs> no um i told i think it was a weird place in my life because there, i was considering going to college in mexico okay and my dad was totally against it like just did not want me to do that and um i told him the truth i remember i was crying and i was like i'm not even at usc and and whatever and my dad laughed like he didn't believe me like he thought I was saying that to get out of my excuse for wanting to stay in Mexico. And I was like, well, lying is hella easy if you don't even believe me when I'm yes. just like flat out telling you yeah. that I've been lying. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just felt like compelled to keep telling the lie, which is awful. And then, and then when I once, once I was actually like in LA and I was like, okay, okay, okay have a job. I'm renting this room out for like 400 bucks. It's cool. It's all chill. Like, Damn. like I, um, I really didn't, well, I wasn't okay with no school overall. Okay. And I started going to Santa Monica college, which is so funny. I feel like life has humbled me in so many ways. I was this obnoxious kid who thought was going to go to like fucking Yale. <laughs> and here I am in LA going to Santa Monica college and it took it took me really like just swallowing my pride of who I thought I was as a student and and um and I met amazing people at SMC. I had insanely intelligent professors and people that have inspired me like to this day I think back to their classes fondly where I'm wow. just like I that class changed my life like that thing that that person said and and they did because, for example, one of my English teachers there, I was always, I was a really good writer in like normal English, like essays, right? And he was like, have you ever done creative writing? And I was immediately like, no, <laughs> like so scared, right? And he was like, I think you should do it. He's like, I teach it. And I had already taken like three of his classes because I always look for his name to take his class because I really liked his oh, class. That's cool. And so he was like, I really think you should do creative writing. And then it became my major because I loved it. Damn. And like things like that would have never happened to yeah. me. Like to this day, I keep writing like in my note, my notes section is like 2000 notes. And it's Damn. just like, like poems that I write occasionally. Like sometimes my friends will tease me because we'll be somewhere. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I pull out my phone and I'm just like, mm -hmm. I type something real quick. And they're like, oh, oh, you got on your feelings just now. And I'm just like, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> they know you so well. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. That, that is so cool. So uh, um, these, you know, kind of on the path that you've gone down, like kind of up to this point where in, we're in your story, um, once again, has really shaped who you are. Yeah. Because what would have happened if you would have gotten into that school, right? Where would you be now? I mean, everyone's story is completely different, mm -hmm. but... Um, through that, through that lie, right? Through yeah. taking that chance, through your dad not believing you, yeah. um, has kind of once again defined who you are. Not the, the lie, because the lie hasn't yeah. defined who you are, but it gave you the other opportunity, right? Yeah. And so you're at Santa Monica College right now. You're paying four hundred dollars a month in rent. Yeah. Um, how, how old were you at this point now? I. I, I'm, I get confused because it took me a year to actually get into Santa Monica College. I think once wow. I was living here, I was kind of like, okay, okay, okay. And then I was like, no, 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 I need to go to school. Yeah. And maybe 20. Okay. Young. Yeah. You're fucking young. That's so cool. But it doesn't to seem me. that way when you're there because you're no. already like, oh, already, people already are like halfway through. Yeah. And you always, like, you always sort of get on yourself about the fact that you like you <laughs> you didn't do something sooner of course, or like you know course. what I mean I know I get it I get it. Yeah. I, I think that's just life in general mm -hmm. right we always think oh we should have done something sooner we always should have done something yeah. sooner but when does it ever become enough when now is the right time yeah right? it's never enough until like you find that place inside yourself that's like you're enough yes <laughs> regardless no. of what other people are doing that's it right there oh man that's right? such a big lesson for me lately where i'm just like it is never gonna be enough you're never gonna be happy with anything until you're fucking happy with yourself <laughs> you know that's so crazy because 
everyone I've talked to on this podcast has said the same thing. And for the longest time, for me as an individual, I've never thought I'm enough. I've never thought. It's so hard. But we never think other people think that way because Mm -hmm. as human beings, we're all two people. Right, the the people that the the that that the person on the outside that the people see, right, and mm-hmm. the, they have their own views, um, and then the person that we are on the inside, yeah, and everyone is the same. It doesn't matter what your story is, who you are, we are all the same, but we just have to learn to admit that because we're all human beings. Yeah. Um, so, wow, that's fucking crazy. Just a big real- realization for me. Sorry. Yeah. Um, no, I love it. I love it. I love it. It's crazy. Uh, so, so that being said, right, um, you're going through all of this. What was the next step for you? Like you, um, you're going through college now. What, what, were, what did you want to be before you even like got into acting and did all what you're doing now? Like, did you want to be something different? I always thought that I would do either an English major or a psychology major. Okay. Um, And those things still really interest me. Like, don't get me started on like, if there's any documentary on some type of like serial killer or something, like I always thought I was going to do like criminal psychology. Okay. Because I just, you know, and not to, uh, because I think right now there's like this, there's a lot of concern about how like we praise criminals, right? Or we give them fame. For sure. We do. But I think, I think I just saw it from a standpoint of like what drives people to do shit. And I think I'm acting for the same reason. It's kind of really weird. Mm -hmm. Where like I, I, every time I read a script or something that really grabs my attention, I'm like, oh, and it's so interesting because you'll be sitting around a lot of people, like, especially once you're on a cast and you're working somewhere and then you hear like the, the actor that's playing like the horrible guy. He's like, you know, but he just wants to be like accepted by his father. And, <laughs> and everybody's talking to themselves into why it's okay to say yeah. the lines they're saying. And like, so it's cool. so amazing. It it's so cool that, you know, we have this ability to really get into, um, somebody else's shoes and mind. And, um, that's what interested me about psychology to begin with. So I think that sort of, that was my interest if I wasn't an actress, but I'm also a person that's genuinely curious about a lot of things. I can tell. But I, but I always, I always, always, always in the back of my mind, like thought I, 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 this acting thing, like I really want to give that a try. And I, I'm not entirely sure why there's not this thing of like, I once saw this and I really, <laughs> it just changed me and yes. I wanted to follow this <laughs> acting path. No, never something like that. I think I just, it wasn't so much as a, I think I should do that as like this feeling inside me that I was just like, just try it, just try it. And and so what was that point where you're like, okay, I'm going to fucking try it. Well, failing. <laughs> That's at college. It. No, that's it, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot of times people look at failing as a bad thing. And in the moment, it is it's terrible, horrible. right? But if you ask any of any of the greatest entrepreneurs, any of the greatest businessmen of all time, right? To, to the Elon Musk, to the Warren Buffetts, yeah. right? Um, their failures have defined who they are as individuals because you learn and you know if you are able to learn from your mistakes and grow upon that then you can have a way different life compared to the people that just kind of sulk and just like fuck this and give up yeah right so you took failing right and turned it into something completely different um yeah, I do guess. you remember that point in your life i just think once it happened to me I was so angry and I just felt like I am not a failure. Like I am not that person. Like, and I, it sounds mean to say that, like, I'm not the person that fails, but I, I just, I just was angry. I was like, no, I am worth so much more than this. Like I will be great no matter what. Fuck you. Yes. No. (laughs) Yes. That's seriously how I thought. And, And it is important, but I think you have this like, 
sense of bravado when you're young that's, <laughs> that's like so true. that like comes from nowhere like yeah. you're just like you're in shit yeah, really but exactly. at that time you're like you sit you down yeah, fucking yeah, 18 yeah. year old like, <laughs> like it's so true <laughs> you're like what do you think what you are fuck, exactly yeah, yeah. but if you didn't have that yeah. then you wouldn't get to the places <laughs> that you get to as an adult it's so crazy yeah. and i think that's more or less kind of what went through my mind and i and it's I think there was something about being alone once I moved to LA and living in this lie. And I think I had nobody to confide in. I mean, I lied to my sister, to my brother, to my mom, to my dad. There was only maybe two people that knew what I was really doing in LA. Okay. So I didn't have anybody to confide in but myself. And that made me, I think that's both a good thing and a bad thing because it makes you a very guarded person. I think you know, in the last couple of years of my life, I started going to therapy also on this, on the reality that I was a very defensive person. Respect. I would get so defensive so fast. Like nobody could say anything to me without me just being like, you know, and I think it came from that insecurity mm. of always being guarded and always like living this lie and feeling like, <sighs> I don't even, I don't want to say you're not enough, but yeah, that feeling that yeah. somebody else in a room is like more educated than you and, yep. and is doing that thing you didn't do. And, and I was so defensive and I think, um, it came, it came a lot from that. So you said something that really stands out to me and I wish more people would talk about it. And you said therapy. Yes. For me, um, I'm a big believer in therapy. Every human being is going through shit. Mm -hmm. And um, people are like, well, why don't you just talk to your friends? Why don't you just talk to your family, right? It's so different when you have a person, one, that you feel super comfortable with, Number two, that has a biased opinion, not a non-biased opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and number three, uh, just the fact that, and I'm bringing back just the fact that you talked about it, you said it, right? We we live in this culture where you know it's like let's not talk about it, let's push it away, right? And I, and I do believe as we move, you know, more and more um, into the future, it, more and more people will talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. um, for you as a human being, what was it that you said? Okay, I'm going to talk to someone. I'm 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 done kind of being this this person because I, I do understand what you're saying um, that being the individual that just says any type of constructive criticism, fuck that, fuck that, fuck that. I was that type of person myself, mm -hmm. right? And therapy has allowed me to open up my mind, say, wait a minute, I, I want that because it makes me a better me. Mm -hmm. um, for you, what was it? Was there a breaking point? Was there something in your life? What, what was it? There was 100% a breaking point for Good. me. I, first of all, I never thought I needed therapy, quote unquote, yeah. you know, because that's a big thing. That's part of the stigma of like, why do you need therapy? Yes. You know, to the, I think my parents, it freaks them out a little bit that I go to therapy. Um, because they're a little bit like, why, what's wrong with you? And I'm just yeah. like, a lot of things. <laughs> Calm down. I'm human. Exactly. Um, but I think the reason I'm so open about it um, is because I've been going to therapy three months now. Respect. And, it, it, yeah. and it's changed my outlook on life. It's changed my outlook on myself. It's changed my outlook on how I go about relationships. And I... You know, I read this thing the other day. I wish I could take credit for it, but I can't. It said, when awareness meets action, you'll have change. There we go. It's so powerful. Like awareness of yourself. Because yes. I think I think it's not, therapy doesn't change you. It makes you aware of why you do the shit you do. Yep. And then when you're aware of why you do it, you're like, wait, 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 wait. So why am I going to answer this text right now? Where is this coming from? What am, what do I need right now? Yeah. And I think that that is so powerful when you're aware of it, because then you're like, well, then, then, then I'm, I'm just feeding into this like dark shadowy part of me that needs validation that needs this. And that's been so powerful for me because I think there's been, you know, you asked me what took you to this place. Right. And I'm just going to get really real and really candid. Respect. And I think, you know, I've been in a couple of just 
bad relationships that have not been bad because necessarily the human being is the worst human being in the planet, but they've just been bad and they've not served me and they've um, progressively gotten worse. And I think it got so bad in my last relationship as far as things that I really don't want in my life that I was just like, you know what? I think I, 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 I really looked at myself and I was like, you can blame the people you date as much as you want, but what's the common denominator in every relationship and every guy you've ever dated and the only person that's the same is you. Like yes. you are the only person that is the same. You keep dating the same person. And I, and I think I got so aggravated at myself that um, I went to therapy. The day I went to therapy was like in June, right, of last year. I went and then left was in a strange space the entire day. And then I got to my apartment and I cried for like two hours. And I remember not going back to therapy (laughs) because it was sort of like, it's kind of like therapy is kind of like going to the doctor, right? Mm -hmm. In the sense that like, oh, I'm bleeding. I should go to the doctor. But the difference with therapy is you don't know where you're bleeding from. And sometimes you go to therapy and all of a sudden you're bleeding even more. And at first you're like, well, where the fuck is it? Where's the thing? Where do I stop it? Where do I mend it? And you don't know because it takes a while. And I think that was my first experience with therapy. I just ran away because shit was too real too fast. And it wasn't until a couple months later that I was like, I really need it. And I, um, and I started going and I stayed going and I'm still going. And, and I, I, I just think it's, it's made me very aware. And I think one of the things it's allowed me to do is I think sometimes, you know, it's, you said that, you know, we are very much like we don't feel worthy or we feel really low about ourselves because we have that internal self that's different from the one we show to the world. And, and I think the thing about therapy is that it's helped me forgive myself about the things that I don't like about myself. Yeah. And that's been the most, I mean, it's still a journey that I'm on, but it's the most powerful thing I've ever decided to do for myself. And it's hard. It's not like, it's not easy. There's a lot of homework that you have to do (laughs) on yourself. And and it's just like, it's just like you, sometimes you just want to be like, oh, when am I going to get better? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's so true. But you just have to be tired of your own bullshit. And you do. and you said you can't just talk to your parents. You no. can't just talk. And it's not because sometimes the problem is with your family. Sometimes the problem is with your friend that you fucking love and is your best friend. Sometimes the problem is with them. Yeah. Like, again, my breaking point was people I dated that I loved very much, you know? And I think the two men I've loved the most the only two men that I've actually ever can say, like, I really love those people. I was in love are the people that have like harmed me the most, but that bothers me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, th- and I think that that's what took me to that point of like, okay, okay, okay. What is it? Cause there's always, you know, I, there's this woman, her name is Lacey Phillips. And she says that anything in our life is like a manifestation of what we feel we're worthy of. And it's not, immediate to us no. because a lot of what we do is subconscious shit 100 percent. it's so true so like you might be in these really bad relationships and you're like why i don't get it like i don't get it and and it's like yeah you don't get it because you don't really know what is inside of yourself to a level of like you really know who you are at that depth yes and once you understand that then you're like you know what this thing that's been haunting me and hurting me and that i haven't been fully aware of now I'm bringing it to light and it's painful. It is. It's so painful. It is. It's, it's hard. It's hard. It is. But when you do it, you can let go of it too. And you yeah. can stop letting it control the decisions that you make. So I am so open about therapy because it's, I, you know, I think it's, it's so good. It is. It is. And I appreciate you uh, being so open about it because yeah. there isn't a lot of people and you know, for me, I'm, you know, I suffer from manic bipolar disorder. So I'm fucking one day I'll be like here, the next day I'll be there. And within 30 minutes, I'll be up and down. Yeah. Right. And I never understood why I never understood why I was the way that I was, but I always knew that 
I wasn't personally happy with the person I was. Even if people on the outside, oh my God, Brock, you're doing so good. Brock, yeah. No, no, fuck that. I'm, I, I hate myself, right? And there was a dark moment in my life where I was suicidal and I couldn't face these things head on. And then I got into therapy and I found someone that I could connect with on, on a deeper level that this human being allowed me to open up in ways that I never did before. Yeah. And, and even on my some of my darkest days where I know that I have therapy, I'm like, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. Yeah. But <laughs> Alyssa, my wife, she's like, go to fucking therapy. Yeah. Because as soon as I walk out, I walk in the door, I walk out that door, I feel so much better. Mm-hmm. I feel so much better. And I don't know, I come from the thought... Uh, the, the thought belief, if you will, that everyone should have a good therapist because we all go through shit, yeah. right? And it's the ones that can face it head on. It's the ones that can be like, okay, I'm a human being. Like I, uh, this is who I am and I am flawed because we are all flawed. There is no perfect human being on the face of the planet. I don't give a fuck if you're Elon Musk, yeah. right? We, we all have our shit. That doesn't exist. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't exist, right? So have you also ever liked somebody that's perfect? No. No, no you, I don't that's like so people. like when you no. date, when you date somebody that's just like, or you go on a date with somebody yeah. that's just like cute and then it's yeah. like, absolutely not stimulating at all because they're trying to be perfect. You're like, this is boring. No. So we need to stop glorifying perfection. Yes. Because it's, it's, like, it's not, you, you no. know, it, no, it's, it's not real. Of course, there's outliers and sports and business and that yes. and the other, but psychologically mm-hmm. inside our brain, there is no perfection. There never has been. There never will be, right? At the end of the day, that is a fact. Yeah. So you talking about it, you being open about it, it brings me comfort. It makes me happy because I'm so open about it. I talk about it and I just want more people to be open and and talking about it. All right. Yeah. So now that I said that, right, we're going to dial it back one more. Absolutely. Let's go. Let's Let's, let's do this. Let's do this, man. (laughs) Let's do this. Um, Okay. So you're, you're going through, um, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing like you're going through your twenties, right? Yeah. Um, you're going to Santa Monica college. How long did you go to school there for? And then what was the point in your life where you dropped out? So it's, um, no. So no, you're like, no bitch, you're wrong. (laughs) Well, tell me, cause I have no idea. Okay. So I was, when I started going to Santa Monica College, I <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. I don't get to, I don't get to write every time. Jeez. No, was I really aggressive? I feel like sometimes I'm just like no. Uh, no, yeah, no, they shut the fuck up. No, Let me wrong, tell story. wrong, no, wrong, no. wrong. Take over. Um, <laughs> I was always acting, and that was always my first thing that I was doing. So okay. before Santa Monica College, I was already auditioning, but at the time, being somebody with no experience. I was doing like student films. By the way, when I lived here for four months, I did a music video. So I feel I felt that little thing of like, oh shit, I booked this little thing. So I feel like every single time I was in LA, even if it was like a mediocre thing by all means of what anybody else compares to success, I felt like, well, well, there's, I'm I, like, I feel like I could do this, and yeah. other people think I could too, and and. Um, I started booking student films, which is still like you audition. It's just the stakes are lower and which is good. I think like people really put down student films because they don't pay. You know what I mean? Like you get a pizza during like they feed you. (laughs) That's how you learn though. But, and you know what? You don't even learn like student films are not the set that you're going to be on if you actually start working. Of course. But you get this sense of like, if you're willing to do shit for free, then you're really willing to do this. Yes. And I think I did about six of those. Good. And the last one that I did, I was still at Santa Monica College and it was a very well-produced short film because it was a thesis short film. Um, and I've nice. shared this with pe- like Instagram and whatnot before, but I was a non-documented like, person and like trying to cross the border and she's pregnant and um that was your role that was my role okay. and we 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 would drive to palmdale at 4 a.m and this was like a grad with like a bunch of people that were in a thesis class in like usc and i i still talk to those people i still like awesome. i still can like they're like hey i'm working on this or whatever and like i just am so grateful that i got that opportunity because 
I that last short film I'm really proud of and it came out really beautifully and not only that but I, I had something to show so then from there I got like an agent then I got an agent it didn't really work out they would send me to these auditions and this is all while I'm at USC I mean pfft, the SMC <laughs> yeah. the lie still it's hard to shake man still keeping the lie going <laughs> I commit okay that's right I commit to my roles that's a method actor yeah but um <laughs> that's hilarious it's the one but um but I I was at, with an agent that I got and I was like I think I cried when I got my agency but not in an excited way I was really scared I was like, oh, like now there's this person that I have to like perform for or like, you know, and um, they would send me to these auditions where I would get there and I would be like tall, skinny, blonde girls. And I just, I would always feel like, yo, I don't belong here. Fuck. Like there's no way that I'm going to get this. I look nothing like these people. Like, and I, I mean, maybe that was my own insecurity, but literally I did not fit into those rooms. So I, they dropped me, but before they dropped me, I, I already had this sense of like, this isn't right for me. And I started looking for a manager and it's so funny. Anytime I tell like any working actor, how I got my like manager, they're all like, how did you, and I was like, I sent a headshot in the mail <laughs> and <laughs> somebody called me back and wow. I remember there was a cover letter in there where I was just like, hi, my name is Andrea Londo and I, you know, I'm a student at SMC, but really what I want to do is acting and this is my priority. Like I will skip school. I will do this. I will yeah. drop out. Like I like, I want to be an actress. Yes. And I went, I got really close with one manager. I went to like three meetings. I had a cold read, whatever. And then they decided not to sign me. And I remember being really down, like, fuck, you know, like whatever. And then oh, maybe three weeks later, or two weeks later, this other guy reaches out and he's like, hey, um, whatever, do you have any work? And I immediately I was excited and I sent him that short film that I had done. Yeah. And he was like, hey, do you want to meet? And when I sat down with him, I think I had already been through that other process with that other management that when I sat down with him, I was like, listen, like, I want this. I don't want yes. this. And like, and I was 21, I think, or wow. 20 wow. at the time. And he was like, OK, I'm going to I'll sign you. And like on the spot and I was like, no, no meetings, no cold read. He was like, I'll sign you. And I remember just being like, okay. And, <laughs> and then he was like, I haven't signed anybody in two years, but I want to sign you. And I don't think I fully understood that that was like a sign and, yes. you know, or anything like that. I was just like, oh my God, I have a manager. You're so and excited. So excited. And he sent me to all the right casting opportunities. And it was just like, once he was my manager, like acting wise, life really changed for me, but it challenged a lot of things. Like at SMC, I remember um, my, probably my last semester, this was close. This was so, yeah, this was, I was really like, I had already booked like a couple little things, tiny things. Like I was like one night stand on a show. I was like, <laughs> I was like an actor recreating an interview on like Catfish on MTV. Yes. And like, you know what I mean? Like just like stupid Wait, what, little catfish? shit. So catfish has a, everybody asks me this. Wait, mate, yeah, I can't say catfish without. No, 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 you keep on talking because I got to close this window. Keep on talking. On okay. Do I just keep talking to this got mask? Come on, dude, just ask. You got it. You got okay, I got there. this. So I yes. catfish had a series of untold stories. Okay. So it's not happening in real life. Okay. So they would have people, they would interview them and then they'd be like, um, hire actors and have the actors recreate the stories. And I was at a point in my life or my career, career. where my career, where my manager was like, you're doing great, but everybody says you're green. You're like too green. You're like a green actress. Like you haven't, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was before I had like, Catfish was the first thing I booked. And I remember I went in there and I was going to read for this other role. And then they were like, wait, 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 who did you say you're auditioning for? And I was like, oh, I can't even remember the names. And then they were like, no, we actually think you're a this. And I was like, okay. But I was so fed up with being told I was green that I was just like, okay, so what, what is, yeah. what is she like? Yes. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> and I remember they gave me a bat. And they were like, just, you know, this girl is in your lawn and you, what the fuck? <laughs> and, they were, and they were like, and you're trying to push her away and you just don't let her get into your house. And I was like, I was hitting the wall with that oh bat. Like my God. I was going crazy. And then like a day later, my manager was like, yeah, you got it. They hired you. And I was just like, I got a job. Like I was so excited. And little by little, I started booking more things. Uh, hold on, hold on. Catfish isn't real. No, it is untold stories. So they did a series of people that had been catfish in the past. Okay. 
So they needed actors to recreate their story. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, don't break my fucking heart. No, no. Everybody, everybody's confused about this. And okay. I'm just like, no, 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 no. We'll just say catfish is fake. All right, continue. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm like, no. <laughs> like, maybe. So the, all right. So what happened next? <clears throat> um, well, yeah, I just, but what I meant was I yeah. was at SMC the entire time. And I remember there was this final project due literally, literally three weeks or two weeks before I graduated because it was like final projects, right? And I had to stay and present it. And I went to class. I handed it to the teacher and I was like, I can't stay. I have an audition. And he was like, if you leave, you're going to fail and you're going to go from an A to a C. And I was just like, I have an audition. Here's the project. He's like, She's like, it doesn't mean any. And I was like, I'm just going to leave it here and I'm going to go. And I think I made several of those decisions. I mean, in audition, nothing is guaranteed. It's an audition. But I was in a place where I just felt like I'm going to do this. And I know that this, like, class is not what I'm going to do. And um, I left. But I do remember, like, feeling I made a couple of those strong decisions. And when you were talking about, like, you know, you were in this place when I was still working at Zara, I got accepted. And I don't know how to pronounce the name of this school. I think it's Barnard or Barnard. It's like, it's like in a, it's a, in all girls. Okay. (laughs) Funny enough. Barnard. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. College. Um, that's affiliated with Columbia. So I felt very much like, oh shit, like this is the type of school that I've always wanted to go to. And it's a very good school. And, um, I didn't go. And I remember one time my mom, like, opened the door. I was in Mexico at that, like, cause I visit and I was there and my mom opened the door and I was crying, but like really crying. She was like, why are you crying? I was like, I don't know if I should go to New York. And she was like, you could just try it. But they thought I was at USC. Yes, they did. So I knew that me going to New York was me going to New York to do, to go to college for four years. And there was something about it that I was just like, I'm going to stay in LA because I think I'm going to be an actress, Yeah. which is so scary. Like, again, when I think back to my like decision process, in the past, I'm just like, it all sounds stupid, but it somehow worked, you know? It shaped who you are. It yeah. shaped you as an individual. I, I do have a question. Did they fail you in that class? A C, I got a C. So you got a C in that class. Um, we talked about college earlier, right? Yeah. All right. And so I'm, like I said, I'm, on, I'm 50-50, right? Yeah. But <laughs> you decided to take that interview or that, that, that you decided to Go try out for that role. Yeah, right? which is kind of like an interview. Well, yeah, I guess it's like, it is like <clears throat> an interview, right? Um, how many? I don't know. It just kind of blows my mind that you're going to school, right? You tell your teacher like, "Hey, here's my report. This everything's fucking done, but I I have to go do this. This is I have to go try out for this role." And you still get a C, regardless if you're you had a, <clears throat> a fucking A plus 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 project. Yeah. What the fuck? Why? Why Because part of the grade was presenting it. Okay. All right. I can understand that. Yeah. I I I mean, from his point, I mean, I I can respect him. And he told me, he was like, I'm going to give you a C, but I respect what you did. Okay. So, right. so Kudos. he was a cool teacher. Yeah. Right. I get it. But I respect the fact that he also like was going to treat everybody the same. Yeah. And, um, that's a big thing about college is sort of like, no matter what your excuse is, you get treated equally. Yeah. So, um, I mean, he, who, he doesn't know. I could have been lying and could have done some other shit. Exactly. So it, um, I don't hold it like against that teacher. Not at all. Not um, at all. Not at all. But uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, regardless of where your story ends up, you know, mm-hmm. 10, 15, 20 years down the road, um, do you feel that you made the smartest decision? Well, now I do, yeah. Exactly. But at that moment, you're scared. It is scary. I mean, I knew I was going to pass, pass the class because I knew I had an A. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go to a C, which kind of hurts your ego because yeah. you're like, I just don't deserve a C. Yeah, like <laughs> I'm better than this. Yeah, but um, but I had also already been accepted to UCLA. So wow. So I, I had transferred to UCLA and I didn't end up going to UCLA because, and it's, I'm telling you, like when I say things out loud, it sounds insane. So nar- my Narcos audition yeah. was the day of my UCLA orientation. Holy shit. So I went to my UCLA orientation in the morning and it was all day. It lasted until five, but my audition was around like two, 
45 or some shit like that. Yeah. And I told the orientation girl, like, I'm going to leave because I have this thing in the middle of this. And you're like, I have this thing. I have this thing. <laughs> and she was like, um, if you leave, you miss the entire thing. Whoa. And I was just like, I'm going to leave. I'll be right back. And I was back. Like I ran back and I had like three minutes to book classes for the semester. Wow. And I remember, you know, just like I didn't even really think about my Narcos audition. I do remember it went well. Like the casting lady was just like really excited. Um, her name is Carla. And she was really like, she seemed really happy after my audition, but I didn't have time to process anything. I was just kind of like, okay, thank you. Bye. Yeah. And I left. And um, a week later, my manager was like, hi, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm driving. You're on Bluetooth. And he was just like, so the executive producer wants to meet you. Oh my gosh. And that, that was the first time in my life that something like that had ever happened to me. And I was like, is this normal? And he was like, nope. And I, <laughs> and I, and I went and I remember his name is Eric Newman. And I remember after like the meeting, he asked me like, so how do you feel about moving to Columbia? And I was like, yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my like, gosh. <laughs> I was just like, but I didn't get the job right then and there, but it was like, it sort of felt like I had the job. And then I still had a call back and all that, but then I got it. I got it. Like I got wow. this fucking show, which I didn't understand what it meant at the yeah. time. And I just, I got it. And, and I was just like, well, it's either this or, or school. And I was like, yeah. well, that's a hard choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, obviously not. So um, of course I did. No, 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 yeah. no. Um, um, do you remember telling your parents? What? <laughs> You're like, what? Narcos? Yes. I, I, like, did, I didn't, I was still going to USC. Yeah, no, 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 I did. I mean, they knew I was acting, but they just thought it was cute. Like, oh, wow. like, you know, this, I think my parents were also a little scared that I would be completely destroyed by not making it as an actress and like not, they didn't want me to hope on it too much. Yeah. Which I think sometimes people say that and it sounds very like not encouraging, but no, it's fair. It it's is. a, it's a tough business and you know, um, you know, I did three movies in 2018, but then I only I did I only did like two TV things in 2019 and yeah. a commercial. So it's like, it's not it's 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 a very volatile type of thing to be attached to, which is also why I went to therapy because it's ki kind of crazy emotionally what did this to you. I can understand that and your worth and like yes. your sense of validation of what you get what you do with your everyday life. But yeah. like, I don't know. I just. I, I just, it's, I, it's so crazy. Just like yeah. the, how it just kind of like all happened. <laughs> happened. It did, yeah. yeah. Did, do you feel like it happened all fast? Like, like, I mean, at this point, how old are you? When right now you, I'm 27. Okay. You're 27. But when you got the Narcos role, how old were you? 23. 23 fucking years old. <laughs> yeah. That is so crazy to me. That is so insane. When I say I it out even, loud, I'm just like, ah. I don't even want to talk about the things I was doing at 23, <laughs> let alone what you were doing at 23. That's so crazy to me. Yeah. And so when you went to Columbia and you did that, did your parents know at that point or did they still think you're going to USC? No, they still thought I was going to USC. Whoa. <laughs> they thought that I had like dropped out or, okay. or done something of like okay. taking some time off or something like yeah. that. And I think they were just, they were very scared. Um. I think, I think my dad asked, like, you're going alone? And I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, what, am yeah, I going to bring you guys yeah. to set? <laughs> like, um, I mean, not that they live, like, they didn't live with me in LA, but no. I think it was just this sense of like, oh my God, my daughter is going to be an actress along like, with all these people. And, um, and it was just, but my mentality, you know, I'd been nervous every job before Narcos. And I think once I, I remember, because it wasn't, I mean, before Narcos, maybe th two th months before filming, I had done my first like TV big thing. And um, I remember that like my first real day on set where I was like, I got to act. Yeah. There was no sense of me being nervous. I was like, I am fucking here. Yes. Like, I was like, yes. I'm here. Like, you know, like I was just so excited to yeah. be there. And I just felt like I had earned being there. And, um, which I don't even know what that means really. No. As an actress, like you, <laughs> <laughs> like, I think you feel that way in the moment, but yeah. once you start, you, once you keep going in your career, you're like, what does that even mean? <laughs> like, I, lo I, I love how you, um, <laughs> you say something and then you 
say something kind of different. Right? It's like you look at it from the opposite side. Right. And no, that's good. I, I, as, as human beings, if we just kind of like this one straight line, mm-hmm. right? Well, something's going to blow up at the end. But if you can take a step back and look at yourself and be like, okay, fuck it. I'm, I'm a human being. I am flawed. I kind of go back to that point every single time. And I don't know, for me, I'm at this point in my life now where it's like, I'm on this the straight the straight fucking line, but at the end of the day, I still look at it from the opposite direction because anything can happen. Anything can happen. Yeah. And you've had this life that's kind of gone up, 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 down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down. Yeah. And and it, it's <laughs> a it's, lot of that. No, it's it's it seriously oh, is. And you know, for for you now, you're at this point. Okay, you're 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 in Narcos. You're in Colombia. Um, you're acting. How long was? How long were you on set for? Back and forth. We would. Tra- I would travel back and forth. Um, but from October to May. Oct- so October 2016 to May 2017. Okay. I was there, back and forth. What did that feel like? Oh, I mean, man. this is your first big role, right? This is like fucking it, right? What was that like? That was the high of my life. Like, yeah. to this day, I've had other opportunities, but I think there's nothing like your first. Yeah. In anything in life. Yeah. That's what she said. But yes. ah! <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I like you. You're so funny. <laughs> but um, but no, it's true. It's true. It's it true. Is. It's true. It's like it it was so I think, you know, I wasn't I was originally only gonna be in seven episodes. Okay. And then as we went down the line, they called us or my team, I, that's what I mean, me and my manager, pff, yeah. sounds so official, they called us. But yes. they were like, does she want to be in all 10? And uh, yeah. You're like, yeah, bitch. Yeah. So I was on all 10 and then I, that made me stay there longer. Yeah. And you know what is so crazy? I loved that role. I, I did. I did. But you know, part of it was... I met such incredible people there. I made such amazing friends and I um, had this like new understanding of life and what being an actress was and no experience has matched it. Um, I've had other extremely fulfilling opportunities and experiences that have been maybe deeper as an actress because I've done lead roles now. So it's like, that's a completely different ball game. And I'm so grateful for that. And that has completely changed me. (laughs) But as far as the experience, I mean, you know, you're talking about highs and lows while I was working on Narcos. I booked another show called Mayans, which is like on air right now. And I was going to be a lead on that too. Not a lead lead, but you know, a main, main character. Mm -hmm. And it was a huge deal because people were like, this girl is blowing up. Like, oh my God. And, and like they, it, 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 it's, it was kind of surreal. And then I don't really want to like get into details of that because It's it's such a long story. But, you know, I, first I almost got that role and then I didn't get that role. And then. I almost got that role again and then I didn't get that role and then I did get that role and then I went to a table read and then I did a costume fitting and then I took pictures and then I did interviews and then I did all these things and then three days before filming the actual pilot, I lose it. Like I don't, they change the schedule. It doesn't work out. I'm in Colombia. I can't be in LA at the same time. And it's just like this extremely devastating thing where I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I kind of shut myself out from the world in Colombia for like three days. And then on the third day, God, no, I'm kidding. No. Um, But um, (laughs) Arturo, who's a friend of mine, was just like, okay, you're not gonna be sad anymore. No, we're going to dinner. We're going to go have drinks. We're going to go have fun. And then Matt was, who's another good friend of mine, got off set and joined us. And we just got super drunk. <laughs> and just like, but see, that's what I mean. I, I, I met people that really were like, you're going to be okay. Yeah. And I think, um, for example, like Arturo has always been that person. Like he inspires me so much. He works all the time. He's like such a go-getter person. He's so positive. And I think anytime I'm down on myself, he's always like, you're going to be okay. He's like, yeah. if I believe in anybody, I believe in you. Like, you're going to be fine. Yeah. And I made those type of friendships and those type of relationships with people on that set. And so I am grateful for Narcos on a different level than just like, it was Narcos. Yes. Because I wasn't expecting what happened to me. I was, yeah, okay, every episode, but Maria is not the main character by any means. And I think before it came out, 
I had this moment of panic <laughs> and I, and I was talking to my manager and I was like, Oh my God, Oh my God, Oh my God, Oh my God. Like, I was like, I'm not, I was like, uh, 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 this is a lot of people watch this show. Like I just realized a lot of people watch the show. Like, and, and he was just like, it's okay. It's about the guys. It's not about you. You're going to totally be fine. And then it comes out and then it's just like my fucking life changes and explodes in a way that I like, I, you know, not in like a crazy way, but in a way that was crazy for me of because course. I was not expecting that. I was not aware that that was going to happen to me. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. It just was like, we had a bet going on in my family and they were like, we think you're going to have like 10,000 followers, you know, like it was just like this thing of like, we were just like, we were like, we thought it was like cute, like that, that would even, it would even reach that, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and it's not about a followers thing, but it's just about the amount of reach. No, it is. You know what it, I mean? I mean it, 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 in today's standards, it, I mean, it, but, it is, but, but it's not, but I understand what you're saying. But it's crazy because yeah. I think what happened was there's this culture now, right? About like, how popular are you? Or like, whatever. But I think at the time, it really made me aware of like, anytime I saw growth on my internet profile, I was just sort of like, people Googled me or searched me or all these people searched and then hit follow. Like that blows my mind because those are real human beings. Those are real people. And I think that was what was crazy about it to me Respect. that it became it became less about a number and more so about like people yeah. <laughs> holy shit no it's weird people yeah. like it was it was it was very um it was very it was it was very strange so it's also a humbling experience you yeah. know just kind of hearing it from you it's like these individual people went out of their time to do whatever the fuck they're doing exactly. to look you up, right? Yeah. That's got to be, it's got to be an amazing experience, you but know? But it's insane. It is insane. It's insane. And yeah. it's also like, I think very soon afterwards comes a lot of weird bullshit surrounding that, right? And yeah. I, and I, a lot, I remember one person in my life trying to be like in front of other people was trying to be very like, you know, has it changed you or some bullshit. And I'm just like, well, first of all, I'm not really famous. Some internet attention doesn't mean you're famous. Yeah, like, of first of all. And second of all, yeah, it has. And I think people are like, oh, that's so bad. And I'm like, no, because I think people. Yeah. <laughs> so you become very hyper aware of like, who am I? Yeah. Who do I want to be? Yeah. Like who, who, and I think I've struggled with that throughout, like having more attention online. I, it's definitely been a struggle where like, I feel like right now I'm sort of finally being like, you do what you do and you be unapologetic about it because yes. it's so easy to be scared of getting attacked. And I, and I, and I'm right now, I'm just kind of like, no, you be that girl you were when you had a thousand or a hundred or yes. 500 followers. Absolutely. Like you don't care, yeah. you know? And, but it, it's hard. It takes, it takes a little journey, yeah. but, um, but yeah, I lost track of what I was no, saying. No, 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 <laughs> I, I, I get it. Listen, I, I'm at a different level than, than you. And I'm like, for, for me personally, I'm just going to kind of bring it to me because yeah. I understand please. what you're talking N about. Please make me yeah, stop talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, this is about you. Fuck <laughs> off. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's about your story. But but seriously, mm -hmm. um, you know, over the past uh, couple weeks now, I knew that today was going to be a big day for me because I was releasing yeah. um, five podcasts to the world. And, and not only are they about the individual story, but for me, I'm opening up a lot about myself, Yeah. right? Um, uh, I didn't expect myself uh, yeah, to be opening yeah, up like this. Yes. <laughs> well, that, I appreciate it. I yeah. appreciate it. Um, but whenever you put your heart and soul into something, right, and then you share it with the world, it's a scary feeling. Yeah. It's a scary feeling because the world can eat you up alive they can be happy they can be appreciative it can be 50 50 you don't ever fucking know yeah um but at the end of the day you have to be proud of yourself that you did put your heart and soul into it that you did have the opportunity to work on a project like this and that you are at this level you know because yeah. most people it doesn't matter um, um who, who you are as an actor and actress to put your time and effort into something, most people will never see anything. 
and you have been able to make it to this point. So you have to be proud of who you are and everything that you have done. And I respect the shit out of you. No, thank you. No, seriously, because not only are you a good actress, but you are intelligent as fuck. (laughs) Thank you. No, straight (laughs) up. You're right. The nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. No, but it's it's the truth, right? And you're analytical of yourself, right? Because most people aren't. I'm sorry. Like, and I know that I'm going to get a lot of hate from some of the things that I say, but we have to be analytical of oneself. You have to be able to take yourself out of the equation and look at yourself from the outside. Yeah. Because when we can do that, well, things become a lot different. And Mm -hmm. it does, for me, it stems back to therapy, you know, and and for you, maybe the same thing. And I I think so. Um, So now uh, we're going to bring it back once again. Um, You're you're at this point, right? You you wrapped up Narcos. Um, Narcos is about to premiere. Did you realize how big Narcos was? It's complicated because, yeah, I was like, Netflix show, yeah. Yeah, I've heard about it. I've heard people are fans. But I, I, I don't think it really settled on me that it was this big thing that, like, Netflix is one of the shows it's known for. Yeah. So, and especially when it came out, because yeah. right now there's other good shit. For and sure. and at the time there was too, but it was a big show. It was huge it was for huge. Netflix because there wasn't like huge. It's what drew me into Netflix, right? See, when I see the when I say these things out, no, I did not understand. Yeah, no, I get it. I don't think I really understood. Yeah. I did not. Like yeah. I knew it was a big deal, but I but I didn't understand like what it really meant for me, Absolutely. what it really like. And I, and I was, and it was, it, everything was kind of surreal, but I, at the same time, I want to do say this because I think, you know, we're talking about years and years of my yes. life yes. and Respect. I'm talking about a lot of highs. Right. Yeah. And I've recently come to recently come to realize that, um, highs sound great they and they are. But I've had really bad lows. And I think every time I I get off set, so, you know, you were like, how's it? So you get off Narcos and then it comes out. Yeah, coming out, it was great. But that period between Narcos shut, like shutting down and, and it coming out was really hard for me. Yeah. You know, I was on this high of my life and then all of a sudden I'm home. Yeah. I'm in my apartment. And what next? And I don't have this other job that I thought I yeah, had. that's and, crazy. And like, it was just... Um, I, I have, you know, last year was the hardest year I've had in a really long time. And I think what it was, was like, you can't seek validation from anything, even your job, even if it's giving you this immense high, even if it's, and that's really hard. I think acting wise, you're a freelancer and that lifestyle is so hard. And yeah. I know you can relate to it because you've done freelance stuff too. I did for a long time. Exactly. And it's and it's really hard it is. to do this like, oh my God, this amazing <laughs> thing. And it's like, you're doing so well. And then all of a sudden you're not yeah. for this long period of time. And, you know, and I think I'm always really hyper aware of like how false it is to seem like you're always on top. It's like, I'm not. Yeah, no. I'm no. not. And, and... I've, I have to come to terms with that myself, but I think it's important to say that because I think people really do think that like, oh my God, this girl, Narcos, this, that, and I'm yeah. talking about all these things and it sounds like so many wins, but you have to remember that in those wins, there's these really low points of like feeling really sad yep. and feeling really lost and... and um, I'm using my hands a lot. That's how you no, know it's, it's, it's a good, it's good. <laughs> no, but you know, life is an Instagram, right? It's not an Instagram yeah. picture, right? Because we've become- Or an, feed. Yeah, our feed, right? But, but we've become a society to think that um, everything that we see on Instagram, the, the people that we follow, that's like taking this perfect picture. We don't ever think about what happened before, what mm-hmm. happened after, yeah. right? You could have been in a huge fight with someone right before. You're fucking, per- someone could have passed away right after, right? Yeah. And this one picture looks amazing, right? Yeah. Life isn't like that. Life is a roller coaster. It goes up and down, up and down, up and down. For you, right? Um, 
being a would I say a Mexican American, American yeah. Mexican? I I, I, I think I, it's Mexican American. Mexi- whatever the fuck yeah. it is, like at the end of the day, labels, and labels, fuck labels. Right? I'm both. Yes, you got you, it. You are a human being, right? Thank that's, you. That's what you fucking are, right? We all are. <laughs> and this is back to my story. <laughs> back to your story, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. No, I just joking. Um, what is it like being a, a, a Hispanic woman trying to make it in? acting right i mean yeah. do you get typecasted a lot yes. like how does that fucking happen how does that work ah oh, such a good question and you know why know. it is a good question sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry because so i have this really interesting thing that i'm gonna say that i and i think it's interesting because i've seen it being interesting on other people when they yeah. talk about it not because you know but i think I first, again, life humbles you and mine has to me in so many ways that I never thought it would. And I think I came to this, you know, one of the first things that I said to my manager in that meeting was like, I don't want to do Telemundo because I knew what Telemundo was, which was like the Mexican channel or like the Latino channel where you can just act like a Latino and then you don't really get integrated in what is really pop culture or mass culture or like what is really going on, the stories that are really being told. So I didn't want that. I wanted to be a part of the conversation basically. And I think that also stems from this idea that you see yourself as that person or that girl that can be in the rom-com, that can be the lead in that show, that can, I'm, I can do that. I mean, when I was growing up, I loved Lizzie McGuire. Do I look anything like Lizzie so McGuire? I've been watching that nonsense. No, Sorry. yeah, no, it's amazing. I can't wait for her new thing yeah, where yeah, she's 30. Yeah, 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 and I was yeah, like, yeah, Lizzie yeah, McGuire's yeah, 30. Yeah. I'm like, I can't yes. wait. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. But, but she, but I remember growing up and like, it was so special to me when Lizzie McGuire was on show on the yeah. TV. And this is a blonde girl that I like American that was truly American, not Mexican American that I was just like, I want to be like her. And that really was in my mind when I was starting to be an actress. Like I wanted to be that actress. I wanted to be the blonde American actress. You know what I mean? And, and I think the opportunities that I'm offered are not that. And I have, I'm really proud of what is coming this year because I did two movies where I'm Latina, of course, because I am. Yeah. That's a fact. But the stories have nothing to do with me in that respect. They're just a girl. Yeah. And you know, and, I, and it's funny because I started the year with like this immigrant, like undocumented immigrant role where like everybody can hate on and be like, ah, and, <laughs> and like what's next is so exciting to me because it's real just real people, just humans, like you said, just humans. Yeah. And it's people that are aware that like they want to do that. Like Adam, who's um, Adam Stilwell is the director of this horror movie that I did. And he told me, he's like, I specifically wanted people of two different races in the role. Like I specifically wanted that. And he's like, because that is America now and people need to get a grip. And, yes. like, and I was just so thankful that he chose me. You know what I mean? And that I was that girl that had the opportunity to do that. But at the same time, I'm like, well, now a lot of us might have the opportunity to do that, but it's a journey. And I think I'm at a, in an awesome point in having become an actress or in this world or in this like Hollywood, whatever, yeah. where people are like, Hey, tell my story and tell it right. Yes. And, and I'm, and I'm there right now. And so like being a Latina is interesting because I do fight for that opportunity to be like the blonde girl and just tell a story. But I also fight now that I've been humbled enough also to do roles that are nothing like me and people that are not like me and have not had the privilege that I have had in other aspects of my life. I've also been those people in roles and I'm also grateful because that story is also valid. You know what I mean? It's like Maria is a total stereotype in Narcos. She's like the other woman. She's like this trophy wife. She's, yep. you know, and the way her story was told was like, just peer a little bit into her life, what she feels, what she went through. So I think it's also when it comes to any story, but also Latinos is 
You can tell the same story you've been telling over and over and over again. Just finally tell it from my perspective. Absolutely. That's it. Absolutely. That's it. It's like, don't that. stop. Don't stop telling the immigrant story. Just yeah. tell it from my point now. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And it's like, that is the real change. That is truly what I'm excited for as a Latina is that opportunity to be like, okay, yeah, give me the Latina role. I'm fine. But do it right. Absolutely. Don't do it, you know, as the sidekick. Yes, as the stereotypical bullshit that's been told yeah. forever, right? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, times are changing. Shit isn't yes. how it was. Yeah. And we are all human beings. And you know what? I was thinking back as you were talking, right? And, um, you know, I said Mexican-American. No, fuck that, right? Who gives a <laughs> shit, right? Who cares? Like, Mexican-American, American-Mexican. What the fuck? Like... We have to stop thinking of these stereotypes and these just one-sided views. And I find myself sometimes getting stuck in those, right? And mm -hmm. I'm the farthest of anything, you know, one-sided for sure. But still, my mind can lead that way sometimes. And so, um, you know, just really hearing your story, everything that you have been through as a human being, the ups, the downs, the all-arounds, um, I just really appreciate you coming on here, yeah. being 110% honest. Um, your parents know that you're still not going to USC, right? Yeah, they know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. You said that earlier. But, but seriously. They I, know now. They do know now, ladies and gentlemen. Do you hear that? Um, no, I really appreciate you coming my on check, here. My check, my check. Check, 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 check. No, um, I appreciate you coming on here, sharing your story, being fucking brutally honest honest Thank right you. because there's no other way to do it um that's right looking back at your life right are you happy with everything that you have become at this point not everything respect <laughs> respect um there's a lot of things that i didn't say on this podcast that i won't say on this podcast respect. that are that are things that are hard for me yeah um that I struggle with so much, yeah. but, but I think I lose sight of, you know, every now and then, or just sitting here right now and telling you all of this, I'm like, Jesus, give yourself a break. That's it. You, you you're doing fine. That's it. And I get so in my head and, and I think more so now, cause I think now there's like a little bit more pressure yeah. and, um, I, I want to say, I think mostly what I want to say is um, at some point is fully be like, I am happy with everything that I can like give myself, you know, and not, and not get from a job or another person, because I think that's the only way that I'm going to be happy. And so there is a lot of things that I'm happy that I've done. Um, but I'm not at a point yet where I'm just like, a hundred percent happy with everything Andrea is? No. No, yeah. absolutely. Why? Working on it. <laughs> because you're human. <laughs> right. Right? Because if you said yes, right, it'd be You'd a be bullshit. Like, Fuck this no, it would be a <laughs> bullshit lie. Right? Because every human yeah. being, I don't give a fuck if you're Brad Pitt, yeah. right? If you look back at your life, you're not hundred percent happy with everything that you've done. Of course not. Yeah. Right? Because we are human beings. And yeah. to be able to recognize that makes you a better human being. I'm sorry. I like I, so. I, it really, it really, really, really does. I, you know, I really wish you nothing but um, one happiness and success because uh, you are a hardworking individual, right? You are analytical of oneself. You are brilliant as fuck. Like I, that's one thing I learned about you. No, no, like, like I did. I, you know, the first time at you, we got into a pretty good conversation, right? Yeah. We got in a pretty good conversation, <laughs> right? Um, and I love that, right? That's why I love doing this because yeah. I love getting into in-depth intellectual conversations, right? Mm -hmm. But I totally realize how smart you are on this podcast. You're definitely smarter than me. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, listen, <sighs> listen, listen. I am the type of person that I like to surround myself with people that are smarter than me. And I know that I can realize that because it can make me, it makes me a smarter individual. Um, if you're the smartest person in the room and you surround you're in yourself, the wrong room. you're in the room. <laughs> High five, motherfucker, right there. <laughs> Boom, that's what I always say. I love that. Um, and, you know, it just I, I, I'm going to bring it back because at the end of the day, you coming on here means a lot to me. So 
um, as I wrap this up, and I do have to go to the restroom again, yeah. um, I do have a lot of these true leaser claws. Where I'm a weird I, robot yeah. or I don't pee. No, like <laughs> seriously, like straight up. I'm like, oh my God, she didn't take one sip of her drink the entire time. <laughs> maybe like two. And in my head, I'm like, maybe I shouldn't be drinking during these fucking <laughs> podcasts. Cause I'm like, no, I had, I had I know, at least I know, one of these I know, before. But at the entire time, I'm like, I should be drinking this bottle. Yeah. No, um, respect to you and uh, your family and everything that you have been through and coming on this podcast. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate the fuck out of you and uh, we'll check in soon, all right? Thank you. I I am honored to be on this podcast. <laughs> and ever since I met you and you told me, you're like, I didn't think you'd want to do this. Since I met you, I knew that this was going to be an awesome conversation. So okay. it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you Thank for you. having me. Of course. And I'm really excited to go listen to <laughs> all of these podcasts. Yeah. They're lit. Like, They're gonna I'm, be lit. I'm, I'm really excited to listen to myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah, I'm doing this for myself. <laughs> yes. Yes, motherfuckers. <laughs> no. Um, thank you again and have a good night. Thank you for listening to Back to Your Story. Have a good night. Peace out. Motherfuckers. Boom. Oh. Yeah.